That's your. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Sure you guys can hear me. Um, open up to Romans chapter twelve. Romans twelve. It's not gonna be the only spot that we're be in, but Romans twelve. Uh, go down to verse 17. Verse 17. Okay. Um, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, thine enemy hunger. Feed him if he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And then be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Well, and then we'll go into verse uh, to chapter thirteen. Can then let every subject be, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Okay, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Without them, uh, without yeah, without that, not be afraid of the power. Uh, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou shalt do evil, or if thou shalt do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. Reason. The minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. All right. So that that's all within our context of what we're going to be speaking of today. Um, I actually didn't get to hear Pastor's message last week, um, as far as the Sunday school was concerned. Here's what I had laid out, just to kind of review, and that was okay. First thing, uh, just victimization of God's justice. This was going to be two-part. We would have been looking at 2 Samuel 21 uh, of when uh, Israel, uh, this is under Saul, uh, not under Saul, this is under um, David's rule following the death of Saul. This is already a number of years after that. We're in Romans chapter 12, by the way. Um, and then we would have had, I'm not picking up very good here, we would have had uh, probably close to 10 years following the death of Saul that all of a sudden it's, it's uh, uh, Israel's under three years of famine. And so uh, David goes to the Lord, he pleads before God as far as to find out why is it that we're in famine. And then he says it's because of Saul and his zealousness that he, he, uh, he, he went against the men of Gibeon, the, the Gibeonites. Uh, whom Israel had made league with many years prior, whenever they were actually entering in into the promised land to begin with, through Joshua, when Joshua was leading them to the promised land. And so uh, justice was meted out because he asked, okay, what he approached the Gibeonites, asked, what would they have to be done initially? They said, no, nothing, no one needs to die. And then after that, after he approached, asked them again, then they said, okay, bring us seven men, seven, Saul, uh, seven, seven sons of Saul. So and then what they had done was, um, with the exception of Mephibosheth, uh, they had brought out seven, uh, basically, men from Saul's house, Saul's lineage, and killed them. And then the Lord was entreated of them, the land was entreated, and then they were able to receive uh, blessing. So then uh, points that I pointed out with regard to that is God is just and only does right. And that we see that in Deuteronomy 32.4 and other places in Scripture. Okay, God is the one that defines sin. Uh, now this, he was, I'm assuming he was probably approaching it from the aspect of the, the victimizer rather than the victim since we're dealing with victim today. Um, so God's the one that defines sin. It's not you or I that does, a, you know, the defining of what sin is, but God's the one that actually says, okay, this is sin. Um, 
And then sin is always a willful choice of disobedience. And here's where the victimization would come. Uh, in other words, uh, then, you know, if somebody victimizes me, then, then you know, does that make me? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, does, does that make me a sinner then, you know, uh, since I'm the one that's, you know, been taken advantage of? The fact is, and I elaborate on that, and it says, I'm a victim when I'm not in power of the decision. Okay, and, and we see that in James 1, that when uh, we're, uh, we're tempted when we're drawn away of our own lusts. In other words, so the appeal to our sinful nature from a lust, be it from our own body, from the world, or from Satan, uh, the fact is, I can still choose to say no to it. It's when I give in to it, that, and I, I, I concede to it, I say yes, okay, fine, and I choose to do it, then I'm in sin. Uh, to that point, no, and then if somebody else sins against me, that wasn't my choice to allow that, you know. <laughs> somebody comes and robs me, or somebody, you know, uh, sexually assaults somebody, uh, that wasn't something that they would have um, said, okay, hey, yeah, go ahead, have at it. Uh, the fact is, it's you're, you're, you're a victim if, if you, you, you're, you're uh, not the one in the, in the power of the decision making process. Okay? Uh, and then God sees and knows the injustice is committed, he will repay, although his timetable may differ greatly than ours. And we see that Deuteronomy 32 35, uh, in this passage here in Romans. 2 Peter 3, 9, uh, 2 Peter actually 3, 8 through 17, and 4, 9, uh, 4 14 through 19. Um, so today, we're dealing as far as from the victim's perspective. How would you respond and how do you get grace? How do you overcome having been victimized you know, by somebody? Uh, be it you were taken advantage of financially, uh, in a physical manner. And so the fact is, um, there are, now we live in a country where, uh, and not just, well, it's a cultural thing, but it's actually been like this, for the most part, since almost the establishment of, 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 uh, of, of, of our country, where we have legal recourse to be able to do something about whether or not when we're victimized, but how should our attitude be? So we see here, uh, as far as for the believer, Here's, here's God's standard and God's expectation. Uh, we see that starting in Romans 12, uh, verse 17, that recompense no man evil for evil, and then provide things honest in the sight of all men. You know, and if it be possible, as much as life in, life in you, live peaceably with all men. And then he says, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Okay, so God's the one that ultimately is going to be meet out his wrath and he's going to meet out justice. Now I want to make a distinction here as far as because in the passage it brings out the word wrath. Okay, so he says, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. All right. This is kind of a hot button issue in certain circles uh, with regard to how to deal with a victim or how to deal in counseling with somebody that's been victimized. Um, okay, uh, with my previous points that I had mentioned, so our sin is always a willful uh, choice of disobedience and, and I'm a victim when I'm not in power of decision. Um, most counselors will tell you, okay, uh, you, you need to forgive the victimizer, you need to forgive the perpetrator, okay? Uh, and again, I'm not going against that. Um, the fact is, what they did is wrong, okay? That's legit. If, if what they did is, is wrong, it's wrong. It's what God calls sin, sin, then that's sin. Um, he brings out here that we're supposed to give place to wrath. Is it right for me to be angry when I'm victimized? Yeah, that's righteous. That's righteous indignation. Okay. Now I'm not supposed to lash out or act out in in wrath. Uh, we're told in Ephesians that um, well, let's turn it real quick. Ephesians four. 
that we're supposed to let all bitterness and wrath and anger and evil speaking and clamor. Um, yeah, uh, verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Okay, so the fact is, as a believer, it's right for me to take action and recourse uh, against the person who victimized me, but it's wrong for me to hold grudge. It's wrong for me, uh, well, as it states here, the bitterness, the wrath, the anger, uh, the clamor, uh, the evil speaking, and the malice. Okay? So that, how do you do that? How is that accomplished? How in the world do you, you know, you've been wrong, you know, you've been injured, you've suffered loss of some sort in somebody else's hand. And uh, it's only, I mean, it's, it's our natural flesh reaction to want to go ahead and retaliate and do something, you know, double so that they would not only, <laughs> you know, pay for what the loss was, but it seems like, okay, maybe I could teach them a lesson. Uh, at least that's our natural instinct as far as, you know, make them pay double over, you know, so that they won't ever do that again. Um, well, you need the grace of God for that, ultimately. Um, chapter 13 of Romans explains as far as with regard to our legal recourse. Actually, it seems like they might have had some there about being subject unto the higher powers that the rulers that God has ordained, mind you, they're, they're God's rulers, even the forward ones, uh, they're not a terror to good works, but to the evil. And that they bear not the sword in vain. In other words, they are there and they're put in place by God to avenge evil. Okay, so we uh, need to have a heart, a mindset, okay, obviously of seeking right, doing right, uh, but we're not to hold uh, a bitterness or that malice or that anger or that clamor because what happens is that is going to consume us. Um, that is destroying us. That really doesn't affect that person. Uh, and then two, uh, our mind, uh, God says here that vengeance is his. He will repay. Give place rather to wrath. So in other words, I need to rest in God's ability to be able to do what he said he would do. I need to put my faith and trust and commit my soul and commit the actions. That doesn't mean that I don't seek legal recourse. We are we are told we're given we we're given to that as far as that uh, you know those ministers, the the rulers, the, the governing authorities, you know, they, they don't bear the sword in vain. We can approach it. You know, we can seek justice. It's just that I don't do it in a wrathful manner. I don't do it in a malicious manner. Right? The thing is, you want justice meted out. Okay? And it's not my wrath, but rather you give place to your wrath, and then God's wrath it will come upon that person. Does it make sense? In other words, you're not, you're allowing for God, you're given a situation, that, you're given the situation over to God, and then he sees and he's going to do what's right with it. Okay, it's no longer your situation in that sense. It's, it's God's situation, and he's going to take care of it. Okay. A few considerations with that. Uh, we're told in Second Peter, you know, God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, God is good, and God is merciful, and he wishes that all should turn, and all should come to him. That doesn't mean that this person is going to get away with it. Uh, and that... Um, you know, oh well. <laughs> well, there goes that. Foundationally, most victims hold a very poor view of God. That That's a lot of what destroys them in their life once they're victimized. Uh, and what you want to address foundationally is truths about God that help you basically deal with, you know, the emotion and deal with all the other aspects of of whatever was done to you. Uh, from the, you want to look to the fact that, okay, go, go to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Hi, good morning. Um, 
we'll reread the whole thing, but like, all right. Uh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Okay, know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Okay, enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. So, up to that point, we have, with the exception of verse 3, um, there are commands for us as far as uh, to, to, to carry out with regard to God. We're supposed to make a joyful noise unto Him, right? So, basically sing out unto Him. Uh, we're supposed to enter His gates with thanksgiving, into His courts with praise, and then we're supposed to be thankful and bless His name. Uh, now, here's the reason why. Verse 5. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Okay, God is good. Uh, go to Psalm 107. Psalm 107. You can read the whole, well, we're not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read a small portion of it. But, uh, okay, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Good, for his mercy endureth forever. And then let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And he's going to go and give a description. The whole rest of the psalm is basically descriptions of how God has been good to people and what he has done on their behalf. Uh, but God is good. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Now it doesn't use this term. As far as good in association, but it, it, it's a, this is kind of more descriptive of some of the stuff that he does on our behalf. Okay, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Here's some of the benefits there. And now he goes on describing, okay, forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, okay, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, the Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Wow, okay, so he could go on my behalf as he's seeing that I would have been victimized. And then um, verse 8, Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenty is your mercy. Um, verse 10, he hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so hath he removed our transgressions from us. And you can go on and reading more descriptions as far as what God is like, but foundationally you want to establish God is good. Okay, God is good. Just very basic foundational truths so that I have an outlook and a proper perspective with regard to God with regard to my situation, and then how, how to handle it. I, I need to recognize, basically, hey, God is good. Go to Romans, uh, so we'll go back to Romans uh, chapter 5. We'll go to chapter 5. Here's another one. I know this seems kind of like silly, almost like uh, for little kids, but the fact is most people that are bitter, they don't acknowledge this. I mean, they, they will with their mouth, maybe. But they, in their heart, they don't believe this. And they don't have this settled in their heart and really give things over to God. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll start in verse 1. Okay. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Okay, not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation work in patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, which is an expectation, and hope make it not ashamed, or it's not going to disappoint you, it's not going to let you down, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, okay, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die, but God commendeth, or demonstrated his love, Toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ 
died for us, so that while we were yet basically his enemies, Christ died for us. Peter puts it like this, that he was the just suffering for the unjust, uh, that we might be reconciled unto, unto God. Um, uh, back to chapter 12, so God loves me, <laughs> okay? You know, for God, you know, he, that's very basic, I know, uh, but that's the truth that really needs to sink in. Okay, God is good, and then God loves me, and he knows my situation and can do something about it. Uh, go to Philippians, Philippians 4. Verse 6. Okay, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made, made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, so here's a promise that he gives specifically. Um, it's similar to what we're told in Hebrews chapter 4, which we'll, we'll go there real quickly. But here it says, be careful for that. So be anxious for nothing. Stop being worried or comforted about or weighed down with whatever is your problem, right? Or whatever your problems are. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, okay, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, be made known is uh, basically a passage. So the idea there is the issues that you have are weighing you down. They're like a weight. They're like a heavy, just heavy baggage. And what you want to do is you're trying to get that off of you. So what you do is you, in exchange, you give it to God. It's like you roll it off your back. You roll it off your shoulder and you're giving it to God. And he says, in exchange for that, he says, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep, or it's going to guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So God basically... The promise is that if you give your problems to God, He in exchange is going to give you peace. And it's a peace that really can't be explained. And He says that it's going to guard your heart and your mind. Uh, so you give your problems to God, and He's going to give you peace in exchange for that. Yeah, it doesn't mean your problem goes away. Yes? So you're saying that people are a little off the topic, but you're saying that people are bitter because they're saying that God is no good because He allowed us and such to take place in their life. Fun, yeah. Thing. Ultimately, all bitterness is against God. Here's the, here's the thought process. They may not recognize it, but ultimately the fact is God is sovereign. They may not use that term, but in other words, God's the one in charge. God's the one in control, right? So why did you allow that to happen to me? That's I mean, it's very basic. And, I mean, ultimately, there may be other issues around, but the fact is that ultimately bitterness comes from a, a resentment that, God, why didn't you do something about it? Why didn't you stop that? from yeah. happening to me. That's right, yeah. Or why don't you do something about it now, after the fact? So no. what's the answer? What, well, for, you got to get your mind right about who God is. First off, he's good. <laughs> that wasn't his doing. In other words, he didn't command that to happen. He didn't tell that person to, to, to do that. Uh, that right. he, he's good. Yeah, he just allowing it is not the same thing as doing it. Yeah, well, okay, here's the thing. In 2 Peter, we're told that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right? We're told, by the way, um, we're, not, and we're not just told, but I mean, it's explicit in Scripture all throughout. Um, we have a free will uh, by which to choose whether or not we want to do right or wrong. Now, that's believer, unbeliever alike. Okay? Everybody <laughs> on the face of the planet has a will to choose whether or not they want to do God's will for their life or not, right? Um, well, okay. We, we can even go back to, like, in the garden when Adam uh, was in there and then you have Eve and then certain come, the serpent comes and tempts Eve. She takes up the apple and then, or, well, she takes the fruit and then he gives, or she gives to Adam who was with her and, uh, and then he eats and then, you know, God confronts him about it. Now, what was it that God had specifically told him? He said, you know, don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, you know, thou shalt surely die. 
Okay, now I know she was deceived. That doesn't excuse it, nevertheless, but still. Uh, and then he took up the fruit that was with her. Now, why? Because uh, he was with her. Um, why do you do that? Well, you can speculate whatever, but the why fact is that, yeah, at the end of the day, he wanted to because he said, okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. He was not deceived. The, the wife. No, I know. The wife was, but he wasn't. Yeah, so he, he, he took did. because he, he said, it, anyway. yeah, it, what, whatever his excuse for it was, he said, basically, at the end of the day, is, I wanted to do that. It's, I chose to do that. You know, why did God stop me? Well, because we have a free will. The fact is, he allows and he gives space and um, for repentance. And the, and this, the same way, well, okay, look at it like this. Look at your most, it doesn't even have to be, we'll just use this as an extreme example, okay? Look at, uh, you know, your most atheistic, uh, perverted criminal, right? Somebody that, you know, they, they knowingly uh, flaunt in the face of everybody that, ah, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the ruler of my own destiny or whatever, and, uh, you know, God can't do anything to me. You know, I don't, who's God? Who, who is he to me? He's nobody, you know. And if they would be willing to be honest before you, you could ask him, hey, of all the things that you do, who's who made those decisions? You did, or, or did God tell you to do that? You know, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, like, okay, how much? You know, how much? How much? How much did you consult? How much? Did, how much time did you get into the into the Word of God today? How much time did you spend in the Word of God today to try and, you know, seek God's consultation on the decisions that you made today, even just today, even up to this point? No, he's like, okay, what's the Word of God? You know, why would I do that? You know, I, I'm the, you know, and the fact is. You know, hey, how long have you been alive? You know, and the, the the same way that that man is allowed to be able to go ahead. It's the same way that we're allowed. The fact is, he doesn't approve of it. He's going to meet justice for it, but he's not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want him to go to hell either. Okay, he's still up there. Let's, let's say that somebody's bitter about something. It's not something that somebody did to them. Let's say it's about, say, like a terminal illness or something. Mm -hmm. It wasn't done to them by the person. How would, he, how, would he, how would you approach God? Asking? It's still the same thing as because God, why did you let this happen to me? Yeah. Ultimately, it, it's at the root of all bitterness ultimately comes down to like you're not acknowledging the fact that, hey, you know, not everybody's promised to live a long life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> well, yeah. I would desire that, but the fact is, and that he even states in the Hebrew, well, here's what I would do. I would go to Hebrews personally, and I would point out in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, excuse me, Hebrews, Hebrews 11, that you had people that they were able to see, you know, the mouths of the lions stop. They were able to see the raised, uh, the dead raised, you know, the, their dead uh, come back to life. They were able to see, you know, righteousness brought in the kingdom. They were able to see all these great and miraculous things by faith. And then he gives a second category of people that he said are just as faithful and that God was just as well pleased with them, and actually it seems even more so with them than the others. And those people, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, afflicted. Uh, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, that means they were cut, well, you know, they were cut in half. Okay, so these people were murdered, brutally treated, and in their lifetime, they didn't actually have any kind of deliverance offered to them, even though God could have afforded it, and he did it with others. But he did it with them for some reason. And it says of them, in parentheses, you know, the world was not worthy of them. So it seems, you know, there's going to be people that are going to have their heads cut off and they're going to be martyred in not just during the uh, period of the tribulation, but even uh, probably even during our time now. Uh, we don't we want to see it in this country, but uh, you go over somewhere in the Middle East or you go some, place, uh, some places in, uh, in Asia that are... Um, a lot more militant, uh, anti-God, excuse me, <coughs> that, um, you know, you got uh, believers that are being persecuted there uh, on, on, you know, on a daily basis. And they, at the foot of his throne, uh, are going to cry out to God during the tribulation. Mind you, this is going to be the period of time where God is uh, expected to pour out his wrath personally on the earth. And they 
cry out, how long, O Lord, how long till we are avenged? Okay, so you have that longing and that desire for justice to be meted out. And, uh, okay, anyway, so with a situation like that, it seems like that's not right. I have an expectation of, you know, being able to, you know, have kids and grandkids and, uh, you know, have a long life and, and all these things. And then I would say with regard to that is, you know, don't. some people don't because that's God's, that's God's purposes and God's, God's desire for them. If you look at Job, in Job's lifetime, did, now in his lifetime, while he was alive from the recorded account, do we have any indication that God ever explained to him why he went through what he went through? Not really, not that. No. There's actually really not really an explanation given to us as to within the recorded account as to why. He would know now. What, what's that? Yeah, he would know now, but I'm saying um, during his lifetime while he was alive. Now, God blessed him after the fact, but he didn't have to do that. In other words, he was, he was under our obligation to do that. He, cho he chose to do that. Uh, but nevertheless, it, with, with Job, he didn't have an explanation as far as to why that happened, why that occurred. You know, that he lost everything. He literally lost his health. He lost all his material possession. He lost all his family with the exception of his wife. Um, and uh, no reason. And as far as he knew, hey, I've done right. I've, I've lived, I've purposely chosen to live my life according to what God has taught me and, and what God's word says. You know, to the T. Uh, you can have found a more person that you can have found a uh, person with more integrity or virtue in them. Uh, and, you know, he was. You know, he was he was a godly guy, and then you know, God was the one that approached Satan. Hey, have you considered my servant Job? Okay, it's not that God's some cruel guy, you know, looking out to torture us. Uh, the fact is, there are things that He allows that we might not get an answer for in this lifetime, but uh, here are some truths that help you with that. He's good. Okay? <laughs> Ultimately, you, if, you don't, if you don't rest yourself on that, then everything else is going to be like, wow, okay, whatever. And you're going you're gonna to be jaded. But uh, I have to rest on the fact that he's good. And it's because he is. Uh, he loves me. And he knows my situation. He can do something about it. Okay? Now, the time frame as to whether it will be a short amount of time or a long amount of time. It might not even be in my lifetime. I don't determine that. I don't, I don't see where in Scripture where we can determine that nevertheless. But I know as far as for my peace of mind and having a, a heart that is clear and clean. Okay, you think of somebody like, uh, like well, we'll use him just because Joseph. Um, he suffered a number of injustices against him. And at the end of his life, uh, he could look back and say, hey, you know, you all meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And uh, there's others that maybe go out and die and don't get, you know, get to experience the, the benefit at the end of their life. But if they're faithful, then they'll be able to stand before God. And he'll say, well done, but he's able to go ahead and comfort. He's able to go ahead and uh, he's able to give grace. Go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Okay, uh, starting in chapter 1, verse 3. Okay, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us with all tribulation, or excuse me, with, uh, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them uh, which are in any trouble uh, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Okay, for, the for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we are be, or whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that ye are 
partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of uh, the consolation. Okay, so part of the allowing of some of that stuff to happen, uh, be it a, a disease, uh, be it somebody victimizing a person, uh, is so that we would have God's come. Hey, what are they? Hey, good morning. What are they? Um, so that we would have God comfort us, so that in turn we would be used of Him to comfort others. Um, and so that that's another aspect, that's another angle with regard to that. Um, as far as you, you look, somebody looking for answers and somebody looking for, uh, in Segundo de Corintios, uh, capítulo, aquí estamos. <laughs> um, and so we would have that um, as far as to rest in, as far as, okay, hey, God could be using this. If you, you know, um, are ever victimized or find yourself in a position where you are uh, wanting to lash out in wrath or anger or bitterness and such, uh, first of all, you, you, you need to get a proper perspective on that. And, with anybody, it, it ultimately comes down, okay, hey, that's not excusing what the victimizer did, what the perpetrator did, uh, but it's simply, I can't be vengeful or wrathful or be in bitterness. Or, uh, it's obviously right to be angry, uh, but we're told to be angry and sin not. You know, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Uh, I need to give this over to God. I need to appropriate God's grace. In Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews 4, uh, chapter, uh, verse 14, Hebrews 4, 14, says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Okay, let us hold, hold fast our profession. Okay, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all time, uh, was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And then let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. All right, so... Uh, the idea of boldly is with liberty. It's the difference between me walking into, say, the Oval Office at the White House, uh, which I think I've been through there once, but that was I was a little kid. I was probably about nine or ten <laughs> when I, you know, when we took a tour in the summertime in D.C. But um, uh, no, I didn't get to meet the president there at the time. But uh, it. But that's not that's not my house. That's not my room, you know. As opposed to if I were to go into my own bedroom, when I walk into my own house, you know, this this is my place. I belong here. So the idea there of uh, boldly is that this is where I belong. This is my place. This is this is just as uh, my place as, as you know my own bedroom or such. Um, so the throne of grace coming before God, crying out to Him, asking Him. Um, he wants us to come boldly. He wants us to come to him. And then um, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And grace is God's ability, God's divine enabling to be able to handle whatever comes our way, whatever uh, he, yeah, he's in charge, he's the one in control, and then he would see. Uh, but it doesn't have to overcome me and overtake me and destroy my life. I have legal recourse, and we're given in Scripture that the powers that be are ordained of God, and the sword that they yield, they don't yield it in vain. In other words, they're there, by, put there by God so that evil would be avenged. Do you guys remember in why it was that he even allowed that to be the case, the establishing of human government? I know it seems kind of silly, but we get that command in actually Genesis chapter 9 whenever Noah got off the ark, and he says... That uh, if man's blood is shed by man, that that man's blood will be shed um, by man. And so that at that point, because prior to that point, what was going on? What? Well, what's that? Everyone was doing whatever was right in their own eyes. 
What was God's description of it? Well, yeah, the, the, the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. Yeah. And the earth was filled with violence. Yeah. In other words, you have unprecedented, like, basically, in a sense, unchecked, just rampant whatever anybody wanted to do. And nobody was doing anything about it, you know? And then, well, you had Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and then him and his family were spared because they were they, they chose to trust God and believe God. But um, everybody was doing whatever they wanted, and nobody was doing anything about it. So it's like, okay, we're going to do something a little different here for So anybody that goes and can kill somebody, well, they, they're going to be killed. And then at that point, so he established that so that you wouldn't have just anybody doing whatever they want and getting away with it in a sense, you know? Dispensation of government? Yeah. Um, the human government. So, all right. Um, okay, so. All right, we'll just finish up with this. Basically, you establish the foundation of the fact that, okay, God's good, God's love, He can do something about my situation. Uh, and then seek legal recourse. All right, anybody have any questions? Not for this business. Charlie? That's the wrong answer. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't do you. Why are you carrying a chair? Yeah. Charlie, we're good, Charlie. Public. <laughs> 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 What's the one? Yeah. No. Yeah.